Want to, you want to go ahead and talk to Travis? Because I think we have him on the on the on the line, Scott. You know, let's 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 go ahead and get him on. I don't want to leave him waiting. You ready to go with this? Hello. No, I, I was just asking you. I, I, I wasn't. You know, because now he's now he's on the. Yeah, phone. I'm here. <laughs> hey, 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 Travis, what's going on? Welcome to the Jody and Scott show. How are you? I'm good. Thanks, guys, for having me. I appreciate it. No problem. We were we were happy that you had reached out to us. Um, this is Travis Flores, and Travis Flores um, is was was born with cystic fibrosis and has been sort of um, somebody that has been championing the 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 cause for finding a cure for, for cystic fibrosis his entire life. And um, and just recently, uh, less less it was less than a year ago, uh, right, Travis? He had uh, no, just over a year ago okay. now. So just, it's like a year and three months. Just over a year ago, um, received a life-saving uh, double lung transplant, and 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 it and it and it literally saved his life. And now he's sitting here um, speaking to us, and he's just kind of kind of a very cool story. So we just wanted to kind of have him on, uh, chat with us. If you've got um, questions for him, if you're listening live, and you're somebody um, that uh, that that really that's really into, because we're one of Travis's fans, you can give us a call 407-499-8009. Um, but uh, yeah, we just want to kind of chat with you about your story and see what you uh, see what you had going on. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Um, I find that a lot of people can relate to my story, even people who aren't sick, just because, you know, we're all kind of limited in certain ways in our life, not always in health, but, you know, in other ways. And for me, it was always health. Um, you're born with CF, and it just kind of progressed very quickly for me. A lot of other patients with CF have different experiences, but for me, it was a very quick progression. And um, when I was about 22, turning 23, so this was a 2014, uh, I was given about a year to live, and that kind of changes your perspective on a lot of things. Um, yeah. The the things that you think are important become not so important. The things that you wish you'd spent more time on, you spend all all of your time on. Um, and uh, and then I was able to have the transplant, and it was amazing. And um, my life has just been incredible since. I I had a movie that came out. Uh, I was featured in the film Who's Driving Doug, Ooh. which is on Netflix now. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Um, stars R.J. Mitty and a lot of other really great people. It was written by Michael Carnick and R.J. Mitty. It's, yeah, it's been, yeah, he's great. He's awesome. Well, okay. yeah, it was great working with him too. Okay, so so what's that like? Like obviously, like I, like I like I personally have not volunteered myself to be a an organ donor. Scott, have you ever mm -hmm. are, are you are you are you set up to to be an organ donor if something happens to you? I am, Jody, because I figure if you know if something happens to me, what the hell are you going to do with my body? Might as well help somebody out. I mean, well, hook right. somebody up. Well, I was just thinking I mean, the same my, thing. My li my liver is not worth anything. I'll tell you that right now. I was trying to figure out why I yeah. well, I was trying to figure out why I'm not a why I'm not on why why don't why I haven't elected. I don't have a very good reason for it. Like, I mean, well, you know what it is? Uh, you know, I've heard a lot of there's a lot of uh, misconceptions about being an organ donor, and I think it kind of is just implanted in a lot of people, and they don't really recognize it until it's said to them. But a lot of people think that if you're an organ donor, it means that the EMTs or you know, whatever situation you're in where you're not surviving, they will do everything they can to save you. And um, right. it's just, it's not true. That's just, it's not true, though. I mean, uh, the EMT and the doctors and surgeons and nurses, I mean, it is their job to do everything they can to absolutely save you. If they cannot, then that's where it becomes an option of whether or not you're an organ donor. And, um, and even, you know, I think even when you are registered to be an organ donor, the family still has a decision in that. Okay, so, so I think a lot of people don't do it because they're afraid they won't be saved if, if they needed to be. So walk me through this. Like, what happens? So you're, so you're given a year to live. You're how old yeah. were you? You said you were you were how old at the time? You were fourteen. I was I was twenty. Okay. No, no, no. I was twenty two, turning twenty three. Okay, so, so yeah. you're you're told you have a year to live. You know, enjoy it essentially, and then and then you you end up going to the hospital. You think you're there. You you think that you're there to the what's going to be yeah. the end, and then you find out that you can have this incredible procedure done, this double lung transplant. How does, I mean, yep. what, what changes there when it, when you, when you walk out of that hospital, what's different now than when you, you know, it's, enter? it's, so with cystic fibrosis, it's kind of call, common knowledge at this point that you will probably need double lung transplant if your disease progresses. So I kind of always knew growing up that it was going to be something I might have to face. But I think when it's actually put in front of you, you experience a lot of different emotions and, um, 
I remember on November 16th of 2014, that was, that was the final day that I spent out of the hospital before my transplant. And uh, one of my really good friends, a couple of them actually rushed to my side and helped me because I just physically was so ill that I couldn't get out of bed. And I was taken to the hospital by ambulance. And, you know, in that moment, I was like, oh, this is going to be a two-week hospital stay. I'm going to get some meds. I'll be fine. And I ended up not leaving until after transplant. And that was four months being in the ICU and being in the hospital. And it, Yeah. Uh, I do What's have a question that? for you, Travis. I have a quick question for you. Um, yeah. When you come out of there, do you? I mean, not, I know not right away, but right now, do you feel better than you ever have? I just, I'm curious. Oh to yeah, see I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was about uh, eight weeks, or maybe maybe twelve weeks. I don't quite remember the actual amount of time, but it was right out. It wasn't too long after surgery. I hiked around the canyon in Hollywood, California. Oh wow! Congratulations. And that is. Yeah, and I, I think I still had, uh, I might have still had some staples in my chest even. I was, I mean, I was so determined. When I went into the hospital, like I said, November 16th, my doctor looked at me and he said, I don't know if we can save you this time. You're so, so sick. I don't know if you're going to walk out of here. And I just fired back immediately and I said, I promise you I'm walking out of here. And uh, he looked at me and he said, I just, I, I'm just telling you, honestly, you need to have your family come in because I don't know if this is going to work. Wow. And I said, I promise you, I'm walking out of here. And it was so, it's, it's so cathartic because, I mean, I feel like he was on that journey with me. And when I finally had my transplant on March 16th, four, you know, four months the day I left the hospital, and he signed the discharge papers and when he handed them to me, he was like, well, you promised, you kept your promise. Wow. And I was like, yeah, I, I did. And I walked out. What's that, Scott? If, you think, yeah. if, you think, if, you, if you're thinking positive, positive things happen. I'm telling you, it's man, true. it's a real life thing. It, it is a real life thing. It happens to me all the time. It I is, agree with yeah. you. And, all right, so I tell you what. Uh, let, we're, we've got a bunch of people that would like to talk to you, if um, if you yeah. don't mind, Travis. And, um, sure. and also, and also um, you know, Scott's we're, – we're an Orlando show. Scott lives in Orlando now. I live down in South mm-hmm. Florida. Last weekend was a really, really bad one. Um, and, yeah, it and, was. And, 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 you know, and I, I, from what I understand, you were a – um, very, very good friend of Christina Grimmie, who was murdered at um, at a music venue that's right by Scott's house. I actually and, walked there when I went to shows, and yeah. and yeah, and so I just wanted to sort of offer our condolences to you because it's a it's a it was a tragedy that got really yeah. so, sort of sort of really you know sort of lost in in all of the mess of last weekend, and, yeah. and so we just wanted to sort of you know offer our condolences to you over. over I appreciate that. I really do. I, yeah, and I know her family definitely appreciates that as well. And quickly, um, Travis, it's, it's, it's um, really yeah. I do want to let you know this. Uh, I drove by there last night, the plaza, and, and her stuff is still mm-hmm. out there. Her uh, her whole trip, oh, wow. all the flowers, all the cards, it's still out there, and they actually put the light on it overnight. So it's really cool what they got going on over there. That's incredible. I would love to go down and see it at some point if it's still there when I'm able I'll to make it there. I'll post it on Twitter so you can um, say something about it. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. It's, it's insane. You know, two huge, huge tragedies happen within 24 hours of each other in the same city, and uh, it devastated a lot of people, but... Um, you know, Christina was so close to her faith and so close to her belief in in God and 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 whatnot. And I believe that she she's in a better place. And I, I think that that's the comfort that we that we can take from that whole situation. Yeah, and as right. far as her, yeah. Well, all right. Well, let me tell you what. Let's uh, on that note, on that happy note, let's uh, let's go ahead and talk to some of your some you got some folks that would that would love to talk to you real quick, and then and then we'll let you go. Yeah, I know sure. you're super busy. So let's um we've got uh, we've got Beth. Hey Beth, welcome to the Jody and Scott Show. How are you? What's up? Hi, I'm good. I'm good. We got Travis on the hi, phone. Beth. Say hi. Hi, Travis. I have been watching Who's Driving Doug, and I uh, was just so excited to see you with R.J. Mitty. How was that? Because it's an incredible movie. I mean, it was really great. R.J. is such a cool person to work with, and he's really a chameleon with his artistry. You know, he kind of just goes from one character to the next, and you can't really notice um you can't really notice him and his character, and it's, it really speaks a lot to him because you know he struggles with his own disability, cerebral palsy, and he he had no problem kind of flowing from Breaking Bad, where he actually played through with CP, and she playing someone with muscular dystrophy. And you, you're watching the film, if you guys haven't seen it yet, he does such a good job portraying that character who was based on the writer Michael Carnick. So, right. yeah. Well, thank you, Beth. Beth well, Beth, I am. Um, well. I wanted to tell you that I really was hoping to see a lot more of you in that, but I'm looking for your next um, movie or your next show. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. 
Hey, he'll be starring in the next one. Don't worry about that. And yeah, and, and, we're, and, we're, <laughs> we're, and we're a little short on time, so we want to try to get to as many people as we can. Um, Anna, okay, yeah. Annalie, welcome to the Jody and Scott Show. You're on with Travis. Annalie. Hi. Hi. Annalie. Hey, happy birthday. Guys, this is actually one of my long, long time fans. Oh, who nice. I, I went to meet once before. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's her birthday today. Happy birthday, Annalie. Let's, let's celebrate. Thank yeah. you so much. Hey, Are you doing happy okay? Birthday. How have you been? Happy birthday, <laughs> Emily. Let's have some fun. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Hey. Right. You guys have literally made my entire day. <laughs> so, this has, oh, that's this, awesome. That is, so, Emily, yeah. what, do you got, what do you got for Travis? Uh, okay, it's just a very, uh, a very short and simple question. It's just... Uh, Travis, what is your, uh, what has been your best birthday? I know you were talking about how when you were 23, you were only given one year to live, and now yeah. that you have, uh, now that you're, you know, have your double long chance, time. and now you have much more, yeah, now you have so many birthdays, so what birthday are you most excited, or do you have a favorite birthday that you remember? You know, I... I've had a lot of really great birthdays. I'm actually really excited and scared at the same time for 30. You know, I have oh, another five tough, years. Man. I it's feel a like bad 30 one. is. You should be scared. No, you be but guys, you have to realize, like, I was told, I was told I went with five. So turning 30 True. to me is, That's like, big. just, like, kicking it in the ass. Yeah. I mean, uh, no, I just, you should be, yeah, you should be terrified. Now, definitely. Now, considering your situation, I'm sure you're very excited to turn 30 and everything, but you should be terrified. It's just awful. It's as bad as everyone else. Oh, I am. There is terror. There is terror. You'll get your first great pube. Oh, God. God, things no, I'm, start joking. I, no, I'm joking. I know. Thir- right I don't, I don't 30, have any great pubes. I just right want to make that clear. Right around 30 is when I started getting like the lower back issues. Like they just started yeah, creeping. Like weird, that. weird skin stuff started. Like my, like I got weird things going on with my nails <laughs> now. Yeah, his oh, nails are weird. Wonderful. Uh, it's so exciting. Travis, he's losing all his hair on the top of his oh, head. Oh, my like hair lines, like yeah. at the top of my head now. Oh, he looks man. like he's a mess. And the thing yeah. is, and the thing is, Travis, Travis is a good looking guy. Like he's like, you know, he yes. could like be an actor. Like it's, but it's all going to fall apart on you so you know yeah, whatever. I know. I mean, I have another five years to really make my mark in this world as an actor. It's, 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 down. it's all, all downhill from 30. Hey, Shira. Yeah. <laughs> Shira, welcome. Uh, how you Hi. doing? Good, thanks. How are you? So what do you got for Travis? Hey, Travis. It's Shira. Hey, Shira. Um, how are you? Good, you? I'm well. What's uh, up? I just was wondering if you're going to be at VidCon because I'm super excited to see you at the Global Genes Rare Patient Advocacy Summit in September, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to see you at VidCon also. Uh, you know what? That's, that's such that? a great thing to bring up. Um, what is I VidCon? will not be going to VidCon. Oh, um, no. I think, yeah, it's just, you know, I did a lot of YouTube with uh, the Key of Austin, which was really fun. We had over 100 million views in total with our videos, but... I, you know, in light of everything that's happened, I think for me, I just, I, I'm going to avoid, um, that kind of situation. I love VidCon. I love the people that go to VidCon. I just, um, I think out of respect for Christina, I'm just going to kind of stay away from that for this year. What is it, Travis? We don't know what that is. We're old. VidCon is just, (laughs) it's just like a giant convention. It's like Comic-Con, but for YouTube. Oh, okay. Um, Yeah, this YouTube thing's fine. Scott and I are trying to figure it out. We we need to figure out how to make money on YouTube. People are making money off YouTube, Scott, and we're making a lot of money on YouTube. Do you know Animat? Because he's rolling in dough, that guy. They're all making money, and we're not. Hey, uh, this says that Travis's Travis's dad is on the phone. Is that who this is? Travis's dad. Oh, no. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Hey, son. Dad. (laughs) What are you doing, bud? I'm on the radio, as you can hear mom, and see. Mom and I, mom and I just, mom and I just wanted to say how proud we are of you, bud. Man, Tra- uh, Travis's Travis's dad. Let me let me interrupt for just a second. Travis's dad. I've got I've got a four year old son, and you know I I can't even imagine what you have gone through over the last twenty five years and what you've had uh, to deal with, and it must be absolutely extraordinary. Uh, to see your son in such excellent health and in such great spirits and doing such good things uh, for the it's world right now. Yeah, you must be you must be absolutely out of your mind happy. We, we, you can't even put that into any kind of a thought. Right. Uh, it's amazing. It, it, it's 
it goes beyond anybody's realm that they could ever possibly think of. We love you, Travis. <laughs> <That's mom. laughs> All right, Travis is dad. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Calling. That was awesome. Love and, you guys. And, and, and you know, and, and look, we've got and you've got a bunch of other people that would love to to call in and talk to you, but I think we're sort of we 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 got a whole bunch of stuff. We'll do we, it again. That we got to get into, but maybe we can have you on a, a again sometime because really, I mean, it's been a lot of yeah. fun talking to you, and I got to tell you, it's just it's very cool talking to people that have sort of really you know been been through it. You know, Jody, and, I want, and, I want yeah. Travis. I want Travis to be the official survivor of the Jody and Scott show. This is fun, dude. <laughs> Let's celebrate! That's awesome. I love that. Yeah, you're gonna be. We, our- could, we could do so. You know, what we should do. We should set up like a fundraiser for Make a Wish. I do a lot with them, and I'd love I, to somehow incorporate that. I love that idea. And if we can, you know, any any fundraising activities that we can get that we can get behind, we would always uh, be thrilled to. Especially the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation or Make a Wish and stuff like that. Yeah. These are really really great charities uh, yeah. that we would love to work. with. So again, uh, hey, thank you so much uh, for for joining us today, uh, Travis Flores. Uh, incredible story, and hopefully we can talk to you again sometime in the future. Thanks, and you guys can all follow me on social media, and I'll be also taking over the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation's official Instagram in July sometime. So I'll be sharing some really intimate photos of me dealing with CF that I've never shared before. Very cool, Travis. Thank you. Thank you very much. We really yeah. appreciate you. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us. Yeah, you guys are awesome. We'll do this again soon. Have a good one. Oh, yeah. 